I finish reading a book. <laughs> okay. That is to segues what segues are to bullet trains. I, <laughs> as in, it was massively underpowered. I, so I, we talked about the Ayn Rand thing, since you already brought up Ayn Rand, and I was reading it last week. Uh, but I finished that, and I wanted to redress. You talked again also about the Sandra Bullock thing. It's almost as if you were setting the stage for me. But, oh, okay. The argument, it doesn't take itself seriously. I think I'm officially opposed to you, to that phrase now. Well, you can be opposed to the phrase. It and I didn't used to be. Sentiment, That's, the sentiment can be communicated no, without I that think, phrase. No, the sentiment, fine, if you want to be semantic. I'm up against the sentiment. Of what? Of it doesn't take itself seriously. That's still the same phrase. No, I'm saying that's the sentiment expressed by the phrase. No, what, I'm, however I'm you express it, my sentiment. But I'm, what saying, I'm saying, however is, you express that, I'm against that idea. So that like, you're oh, against, it's okay because it you're against doesn't try a movie. No, I'm against that, no listen that concept. You're against a movie in all any movie it's applied to that is exists. meant to be made fun of. You could say it that way. I'll I'll use the quote that I think gave the definition. Because ultimately, why this? Because I because that passage stuck out to me. Because literally, we had had that conversation, and I didn't exactly know. Because I have used the phrase, it doesn't take itself too seriously. So that's why I went. Well, clearly, I can't. It's not just the phrase. There's something deeper than that. And then the book. So, uh, at what point does that actually track for you? Well, let me what? let me let me get all of my sources out of the way first, and then I'll then I'll make my argument using them. Because there's a chapter in the book, and it's rather fascinating, where she basically gives the rough outline of what the romantic movement was. And I'm not going to go into that because it's long and detailed, but I do think her definition is the only one that's conclusive because it's never actually had a definition before. Not strictly, at least. What hasn't? Uh, the, romantic the romantic movement has never actually been terribly well defined as to what it was. Within and cinema what, what or made just it, No, it's just level. the art romantic movement of the late 1800s. Or the, sort of all of the 1800s, to be honest. And so she goes into that, and I'm not going to get into it, but that then builds on the fact that she says that because it never had a cohesive definition, it sort of just petered away because no one knew what exactly it was that they were doing. And so once, they classified once it the culture, things. Well, they classified it by its superficial traits. Hmm. So it's it's most commonly known as like oh romantic it was about you know emotion and all of this it's like those were that was a byproduct of the deeper meaning of it which was essentially as you might guess from the name it essentially was a romanticization of life itself and the idea that it's you know moral it's quest idyllic. moral questions and and struggles for good you know good versus evil and you know striving for deeper meaning in the world and stuff it basically was like take life seriously why don't you <laughs> learn to live a little <laughs> in the broadest possible terms but that came with that brought with it a lot of the sort of emotional storytelling because of that that's that the core of most human experience is you know those things the quest for meaning and all of that and good versus evil and whatever but Anyway, so basically that was the definition she puts forward, and basically no one had that definition, so it's just sort of culture changed and people stopped making that kind of stuff. And she argues the only ways that it still exists are in a slightly less sophisticated genre of basically like thrillers is what she calls them, but it basically is mystery sort of detective shows or books or... Uh, like just sort of generic adventure narratives. What? This is trippy. Uh, does this happen this early in the game that I think what we're doing right now? Jensen, you might want to get ready. Oh, we are. Okay, so we're going to China now. I didn't realize this happened so early in the game. I thought there was a lot more missions to go through. So yeah, we somehow went from Detroit to China in one flight of that thing. So this is, yeah, this is an interesting part of the game. Um, what was I, what was I specifically on? That definition, oh, the, the, yeah, sort of generic, and it's not, and it's because they no longer dealt with sort of deep philosophical questions, but there was still the underpinning of, you know, people struggling to do the right thing, and good versus evil, and choice, free will is another common theme, obviously, because that's, you know, questions of meaning necessitate free will and the ability to choose, you know, your actions accordingly. 
And but she goes really in broad definition. How does she differentiate it from any other? Uh, well, because a lot of fiction that came after it was much more deterministic, where it's like people just do things, and there's not always a, there isn't much fundamental philosophical significance behind it. Hmm. I mean, yeah. Uh, again, the cha- you'd have to read the chapter because it's long and she goes into a lot more depth. But uh, I just thought it was interesting that she talks about that f- romant- the, the, the vestigial er- elements of romantic literature and, and art in the modern day. And, of course, this was written in, like, the 60s, so it was her modern day. Um, and a line jumped out at me because she said the, the one area where this... This is now even these sort of simple pulp stories are coming under attack because they're deliberately adding humor, but what they mean by humor is really mockery. And fundamentally, it's a mockery of the premise of people striving to do good and to make choices and to, and to be free. Huh. And she makes the, interesting enough, she makes the case with the James Bond films where she says the first James Bond film despite the fact that it was obviously very over the top on purpose very f- f- fantastical sure nonetheless james bond is unequivocally like oh he's a good guy we can all get behind him everyone sort of wants everyone can see an aspirational goal in him as like this this figure of tremendous heroic ability and then a lot of the later films she goes she acknowledges it's like some the the humor that was in them wasn't fitting to the story where because obviously says you know even in the books James Bond is a very he's a bit sarcastic and he's witty and that's part of his charm but in the later movies specifically he often becomes the butt of the joke as if isn't this kind of a, I mean essentially it's what became of James Bond where it's now it's written off as male power fantasy essentially like isn't this a silly thing to wish to be and and so the line that specifically struck me, because it was the line that I think encapsulated all of it, was any composition which makes a mockery of itself is a fraud to the audience. And that's where I think the difference is. When you say something doesn't take itself seriously, does that mean it plays fast and loose with, you know, the established strict, you know, forms of of whatever medium it's in as a means of exploration and maybe a bit of fun? Or does it do it strictly so that it can be made fun of. Something tells me if I approach this guy, he's going to tell me to walk away. Sorry, pal. No one's yeah. in right now. So I have to find another way in. And that's what brought that back into my mind. Is I'm going, would you argue that that film was made for any reason other than to be in this stupid, have a laugh? No. Okay. So do you agree then that it's indefensible? Certainly. I mean, I, well, then. But, but here's the thing. I never suggested it was art. Well, I suppose you didn't, but I suppose that's the problem is that we have, we need to, perhaps really as a society, we just need to start getting back to art. I don't Well, disagree. yes, that, but I think we also need to stop just generalizing and going, well, we just consider cinema an art form. It's like, K, is it though? It certainly can be, but that doesn't mean, I mean, that, it, I think it's actually, as we ought to treat it similarly mm-hmm. to the way games are treated where there's because games are so new there's been the debate about whether or not they're art or not and I think the general consensus within that community is is that it depends on the game because of course some games deliberately try to have a message and a meaning and a and something significant to you know ponder and some games don't at all well it's the difference between something again, I like I think it depends on how you're whoop, whoop, defining whoop. art because look at art as like well the way a form she would define art. because mm. it's not just a matter of making an impact no i don't think art it's is dependent the, on its impact but i think the impact has to be possible the idea that it never hasn't made one do you, but, well, doesn't okay, mean that what, it cuz even about modern art slash like you modern get into art's like crap. well i agree if you if you talking modern about art or modern, like like uh, uh what is it called um i have to get up there um, How do, do I do it? I don't know. The, 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 the type of art that's just like, as long as it's expressed, it's art. Now, mm, I think I that's just, a trash point of view, and uh, I yeah. completely... But I just think, how do you... I mean, what do you answer to those people? Because... Who people? The, the types of people that essentially say, if it's 
like abstract, for instance. That's a great example. Abstract yeah, you, art is supposed to be. You, well, okay, okay. Well, I didn't realize I had just stumbled right into it. I was going, how do I get to where I need to be? And then I was in where I needed to be. This except, is where you need to be, pal. Except they didn't want me where I needed except to be. Except this ain't where well, you need to be. Can I, if I, will he leave me alone if I walk away? Like, is he going to follow me? I mean, I guess he's a security guard. He's supposed to guard that area. He probably isn't going to come all the way out here, but. Um, the question is, expression is so broad. If you're just saying, I feel good because I created this, that's not always, that can be cathartic, but that doesn't make it art. Well, because creation itself isn't even, like, for instance, martial arts Cre- is a great well, example yeah, of something where it's creation can be a not, cathartic exercise and not artistic. Right, but I'm saying the art of, like, a martial art, you go, that absolutely is an art form in that mm, they are doing something. Not by this definition. It would be catharsis. It would be it's it exists for nothing other than the benefits that it gives to the people who do it. How is that different than art? Well, that would make exercise art of any variety, hmm. or meditation. I guess it's all all martial arts. You could argue is just meditation and exercise combined. If you wanted to I really suppose, strip it to it, then its, you go. I mean, how far do you go with that argument? Like dance. And uh, all dance is things. an art, but not all of them. Well, but how do you make that distinction? Uh, it's about meaning. Basically, that's where she goes. You're going. You're, well, you're going to have to define art somewhere if you want to have it be something that means right. anything. As in, but I mean, if you don't want to, if you don't want a meaning. hobo smearing their own crap on a wall calling it art, you do have to draw the line. Right. And if you're going to have to draw the line somewhere, like, we might as well draw it where it actually makes the greatest impact. Which is which what? is to say, it has to have some form of meaning. Okay. So, like me, how who how who did who defines meaning? And I'm not trying to be it, like I'm not only, trying to well, be a stick Well, it's not exactly that it has to have a strict meaning. It just means that innately, the artist who creates something has a philosophical point of view, and the choice of what they create and how they create it reflects that worldview. If what they're creating doesn't reflect anything, then on a metaphysical level, it's you know you would just call That's it non. Bad art. That would no you that would be non art. If it has a sort of underpinning that they just don't execute well, then you'd say, well, then this is just poor art. And that's the argument you could make for a lot of in-between cases is you'd go, is there something to be extrapolated? Maybe. Is it, is it possible to extrapolate it because of how poorly it's done? No. Ooh, I'm going to hack this. Hmm. I think I can't deny from having read it, I, I even got the vibe. I'm like, this is, it's hard to accept because of how strict it is because it does require essentially that you reject a lot of stuff which it's I'm not sure the rejection I have a problem with as much as it is that there has to be a way that you can I probably was too greedy oh I was too greedy um, I didn't think that would take that long so I tried to get all the stuff uh, there there has to be a way that you can well, you propose your dev, your all I with whatever understanding I gleaned from the first read through this, and I'm gonna need more than one. I will try to answer whatever you. It's not even question. a critique. It's just more of a okay. So, again, who defines it? Like for instance, within I'm gonna go back to well, it has Marshall to have a f- it has to have a philosophical underpinning that can be observed by people. It doesn't mean it has to Which be the is, same. Which could it be applied 100 percent to martial arts, but I would say not so much to exercise. Why though? That's my. There well, lies my point. Well, what is your point? You're going to have to defend that claim if you're going to make it. That, where do you draw the line in what meaning actually is? The guy, the gym rat at the gym. That's like now. Granted, he's not going to say it's art. So. Well, but that defeats your point. No, it doesn't. In that, so if somebody's watching it, right, and that would be a they, sport. That would be again catharsis. That would be entertainment. Mm, if you're I'm watching saying, a fight because you think, wow, what skill how is they that different have. Than dance? Because not all some dance is in that same category. Where you'd go. This is only interesting. So because how do you? Of, but how do you def- How do you just dis- extrapolate that? I mean, how do you? Okay. How do you I pull those was, two ah, apart? Keep falling things. Ah. Okay, dude. <laughs> Every time I try to turn around, I fall off of something. Uh, what was differentiation that? Why is it so freaking dark in here? Those two things has because to be art, possible. It, in some art was way. a difficult one because of the fact that it was. You'd have to. I'd have to refer to that specific because she has a whole section of the chapter dealing with it because it's, it is a difficult case because it's a compound art in that it involves more than just the traditional arts in the sense of you know visual or music 
or touch because it literally is all of those things. It's physicality and people being able to watch it, but also the person doing it as well as the music that it's almost always accompanied by. Okay. So it's a difficult one because of the fact that it's, you can't just go, oh, because it, you know, you could interpret this from it. So I have to get around this guy. I'm simply saying meaning is highly, I mean, on, on a is very it, well, classically absurd philosophical level. meaning. Because the argument she but makes... meaning is 100% objective. It's not something you can universally say across the board, this is what That would be is. subjective. Uh, that's what I meant. I'm sorry. Subjective. Yeah, it's incredibly subjective. No, not necessarily. It, I'm not suggesting What something it's means to you as, is not necessarily its meaning. I agree, but... That doesn't that mean me, meaning isn't inherently... Just because you might it's interpret something... It's not intrinsic. I'm, uh, what mm, I'm saying is... Oh, well... Hmm. It's not. It's not intrinsic. That's all I'm saying. Well, okay. So how do you, at that point, is it the artist it's, that defines it? No, is it the receiver it's not, of the uh, art? The meaning is, when I say it? by meaning, is I mean a philosophical, a metaf- metaphysical assumption about the universe that it has to be communicable. I suppose if I'm, so it's not just meaning in that I drew a rose <laughs> to represent my feelings. Because yes, that's a meaning. But it's saying, I created this story or I painted this thing because, and in my choice of the object that is the, you know, the source of the art and my execution of it, it relays a metaphysical under, uh, uh, what's the, what's the presupposition about the world? Essentially, I am presenting my view of the world so that others can see it, uh, uh, I can't think of the word, like vivified. That's not the word I wanted, but similar. What does the Mona Lisa communicate? Uh, that you, That's a tough one, exactly, because you'd have to... I'm not, up, again, I'm not trying I'm to not be cantankerous. That it's, I just, I'm not saying I can necessarily answer that. It's, I guess the argument would be it's the fact that it's, you know, the fact that it's even a depiction of a person implies, okay, this is that was something worth painting. A person was worth painting, and the way they were painted was communicating. It's she goes off quite sort of vehemently against uh, a lot of kind of impressionist I, art in well, the way because yeah, yeah. she basically says, if the subject is a person, whoa, okay, he's coming this way. <laughs> You're crawling away like an infant. <laughs> <laughs> you saw nothing. I don't want to shoot you. Well, okay. You're really dumb, security guards, to think that you would just open fire. Ah! I like how your friend doesn't shoot me while I do this. He's just going, oh, man, there's a spot on the floor. <laughs> oh, no, put you... Oh, he got me. That guy was a crack shot. So here's your first well, turn he since He was we... nearly point blank. Well, if he had missed, that would have been sad. Because um, she basically makes the point that you could, if someone were to draw, say, or paint, rather, a... the example she gives is the, a painting, consider a painting of a beautiful woman. You could paint, well, no, it wasn't a painting. It was in the sense of if you were to write, it was a story, and you want to communicate like, okay, this is a beautiful woman I'm trying to communicate. You could say, this is a beautiful woman, and your description could be, this is what her hair looks like, this is what, this is her smile, this is her makeup, this is what she's wearing. Or it could be, this is how she acts, this is how she holds herself, this is how she interacts with other people. And that would therefore be saying, okay, the subject is a person, but the way you're communicating is saying, by dis- by impl- by implying that this is what makes this person beautiful, this is what I'm saying, this is what is significant in life. So you could say, you know, if it's all physical, then that would be a sort of shallow opinion of the world. Whereas if you say, no, it's about character and it's about, you know, morals and things, that's so a slightly more like noble. So it then to answer It's a difficult, question. it has to be a combination of not only what is the thing, but how is the thing portrayed. Where am I Both going? go together. I'm sorry. I don't know, because I got well, shot. You just kind of explained. I assume a way... The X is right behind you, so I think you did have to be in the elevator. I just don't know where to go from there. <laughs> Not the way I went, apparently. Uh, so, I mean, it sounds like you're answering the question and saying the artist is the one that gets to define... Well, it's not even that they get to define it because they might not know consciously. It, but the artist is in the person who creates it is going to instill it with their metaphysical assumptions about life because they can't not. 
every because even by the well that makes even it even by worse. the even by well no if a she makes the argument that very few artists have ever been truly conscious of their work and they are the ones who are the at the top. She argues that Dostoevsky is one of them where wow, I'm surprised they didn't see you. Where it's not just He's going to see me. <laughs> where he portray he knew the meaning of his own art, which is rare. She even acknowledges that that's but even a reasonably well integrated artist would have an inkling of what their art meant even if they couldn't Articulate it. It's very much the Peterson thing. We're going. Ancient cultures told stories because they didn't know how else to communicate their values. Okay. Mythology is... was the way you communicated what they thought was important because they couldn't communicate it any other way. And so it's essentially that we're going. What you choose to create in a piece of art implies that this is what you think matters enough to communicate to others. And even if you can't necessarily say this is why this is significant, so it has to. The be... fact that you made it so that communication... way. Communication. Sounds like that's the fundamental crux of the well, because it's not hang up. It's not always it's be the artist comes out and says, "I painted this right, and right, it right, means right. this." But it's got to be communicated in some form. Like for instance, martial arts at that point, she would argue, isn't art because probably not. It's not she, because she doesn't even consider most to, forms of dance art. It's not able to be communicating anything. Really? No, because you can communicate physically. I don't know. Not, but you can't. You can communicate through meaning through. It doesn't have. You're just hung up form. on meaning. Forget meaning, because meaning doesn't mean this is what it, it's not symbolism. It's not. I'm. It's not interpretive dance where you go. I'm a giraffe. I'm a flower. No, it's nothing. No, I'm not saying it's that. not nearly that concrete. It's why this specifically. It's this specifically for a reason. Meaning you can you can convey meaning in something like a ballet because you can evoke. It's very similar. I mean, she compares it to pantomime in a negative way, where pantomime is sort of the lowest. It it basically equates to child's play because it's so surface level. But it's that same thing where you can in a ballet. It's basically a play without words, where everything is communicated by body language and, sure. and emotion is visible in the way the people move. So you don't have to have the words. So it's got to... I'm going to do the sneaky thing and just... Whoop, whoop. Climb into the vending machine? <laughs> get in the vending machine, and then the next guy who wants something is going to get a surprise. <laughs> um, oh, which way to go? I think it's this way. So it's not a... Yeah, it's not meaning in the sense of an inter a literal interpretation. It's just, why is it this thing? Why is this thing specifically portrayed this way? Why does that matter? And that doesn't have to be communicated, literally. It's just the fact that it was the focus of the piece of art is the communication. You know, why would you... Why do you portray... Because, again, the artist doesn't say the woman is beautiful because she does this. It's you portray the person like this, and that therefore implies that this is what beauty means. Well, it's but a, maybe they weren't it's a going lot of, for beauty. Maybe they were going for ugly. Well, then they, that would just be bad art, because then you'd say, if people are interpreting... The opposite of, of, well, that either means it's bad art in that you executed your intentions poorly or your conscious goal is not what your metaphysical assumptions are. And she argues that's another common problem in most art is the artists are so confused themselves that they might state that this is what their art's about when it subconsciously is not. Mm. I mean, that's very much another Peterson thing we're going, you can absolutely claim to believe things that you fundamentally don't. Because your actions don't bear them out. Ooh, this looks complicated. Sure. This is helping me understand it more. I'm gonna have to reread it anyway, so questions are fine by me. I, I'm again. I'm not. I'm not trying to be dis disagreeable to the the uh, sentiment. I'm just simply saying. I'm just collecting things because I can. The. I don't know where I'm going. Go up here. I guess we're gonna do fine. We're not hurting for nothing. Um, might as well try to get this thing. What? Okay, I'm probably running low on time here. I oh, wonder it's a level about. Two. Oh, I should the... do it. I'm just gonna have to do it. I don't think I'm gonna get this thing. Nope. I didn't get the second cube. Um. It's I'm looking for a password. I think. 
I don't know that I like the notion, and this is coming from it's me limiting. as an I artist. found it to go, I go, this does mean that you, basically it means that you don't just get to claim to be an artist. And I feel that that's harsh, but it, I think we're in an age where that's necessary. Because we have a lot of people who well, do without with the qualifications. Recall that, as we both talked about, that concept of the kind of Hegelian, okay, we can't move to one side or the other. We have to very much get... Well, but I think this is the synthesis in that argument. There's either nothing is art or everything's art, and something has to be, no, there's a line. This is what she's proposing. You could argue where the line is, and in fact, there's some things where I'm like, I think she misinterprets this. Uh, but, but again, I say then that's completely subjective. Because you are saying she misinterprets it. Maybe she doesn't. And no, she I'm saying even by her own logic, I think it's like, I think this could be classified as art if viewed in a different way. It's not that I'm changing the definitions. It's that I think she's misunderstanding the thing in question and therefore disqualifying it unfairly. Well, but how is I, that? Because like, you can, okay, again, so, you, can, you can propose so something and Rorschach, not quite apply it right. Really? What about What about that? You go, okay... Rorschach uh, is in the tests? Yeah. You go, okay, look at this, and what does it evoke feeling in you, or what does it, you know, make... That's more psychological, because that implies that you are the one inserting the art into it, which is why it's a psychological test. But that's... Nothing's there inherently. Agreed. But what I'm saying is... Because those are literally accidental. They're not... meaning. No, because they're not pieces of art. They are not presenting you a piece of meaning. I 100% agree with you. Therefore, you are simply inserting something that literally doesn't exist because it was created by a, by not even a person. It was created by an accident. You could spill ink on a page and show that to someone, and they would say it kind of looks like this. That doesn't make it art because no no person was involved in its creation. Therefore, you're simply... It's the exact same thing as seeing shapes in the clouds at that point. And that's why it's a psychological test because it means the fact that you see something in this when there's nothing there shows that that's where you could so modern art the point of it is modern art has no point limit largely. me i want yeah to there's just have basically i should be able to do it's like the guy who but submitted but that's still a worldview that's being communicated no it's being through, communicated expressly but that's you don't that's the problem you don't communicate through the ex, to, through the execution you communicate through the subject but i'm saying the subject to me of modern art would in some sense communicate well that. like what was the guy who submitted the urinal as a sculpture to an art gallery. What was the point of that? He didn't even make that. The point of the, 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 point the was meaning to was upset the system. Yes, but that therefore was... means he didn't create anything. His meaning was only found in the execution, i.e., by basically being a weirdo. Well, what if the meaning did, was not in the what object? If he did create it. He didn't, but. If he like, even, I'm saying, if he did, and it was just, a, a, then you're biased to that particular uh, shape? Why is that? Well, but well, I don't know that you could argue it at that point, because then it becomes, at that point, it is a utilitarian object, at which point it also ceases it's to have... It's become a utilitarian object, but no, I mean... No, it is a utilitarian object. A urinal is. Even if you created your own urinal, if you created it as a urinal, it's a utilitarian object. No, I'm saying, what if you just created the same shape and submitted it to... A, this you'd be a copycat to... at that point because you'd be taking something that already existed. Yes, but you're I... putting it in as art. You're putting forth that this should yeah, but you be did... in a shape that should be But then that's artistic. the execution. You're saying, by me submitting this, it has meaning. No, it has to have meaning first. The execution is secondary. The but subject the meaning, is the source the of the meaning. Could be... I'm going to stop saying meaning because I think that's where the hang-up is. No, it's not. It's what we're I'm gonna, saying. Gonna, I'm... Is this going to be just an extra long one? Because I don't feel like we can cut it at any point because this has all been one dumb semantic. It's, dumb. it's a, mean... We're spiraling closer towards the understanding in the middle, but it's taking semantics to get there. I don't know that I... I, I think the point I is, disagree that is... with the sentiment that you can... Do you agree that submitting a urinal to an art gallery qualifies as art? Or are you simply playing devil's advocate? Would you look at a urinal and think this is I'm artistic? I'm certainly being apologetic, yes. I mean, I'm... Because I'm, the only reason it has meaning is because the artist said so. Agreed. But at the same time, Which there, and who else gets to define the meaning? Like, you're... No, again, I'm, again, it's not... There's meaning no, is true meaning. It's not meaning. It's metaphysical assumption about the universe. Well, I, if you don't create something, you're not... You're not because the point, the, the definition, as she puts it, which is the clearest that I can make it, is art is a recreation of reality. Okay. 
specif- which focuses on some subject. Okay. Which, uh, w- and in the choice of subject and in the execution of its portrayal, presents the underlying metaphysical assumptions of the person creating it. So I by nature of this is what I focused really on. This is how I made it. It's okay. So I spend. And it has really to be a recreation of reality, which is a difficult. Okay, that so makes some difficult interpretation. Because you could argue then that anything that if you just made like a. Brick. A journal. Well, yeah, that would there, there would not be a recreation of reality because it's not a thing. It, it doesn't recreate a thing. A thing. It's, no, it's, it's not a, a physical a object. Does not count as reality, as in recreating. Because you're that if you just make a shape that is a shape, it wasn't reality until you made a shape. Recreating reality means recreating that which already exists around you, but choosing to emphasize certain traits, choosing to make it appear in a certain way, and even if you don't know why you're choosing that. That is rooted in some f- fundamental view of the world. You chose to emphasize this because you think that matters. You chose to do it in this way because you think the way it's done communicates something about it. If it's just, I threw a piece of clay at the wall, nothing's ever been in that shape before, so it wasn't reality until it was at the wall. At which point it's still not a recreation of reality because all it is is a recreation of itself. Sure. It's similar to the way you could argue that a painting of an apple... You can you could paint an apple and everyone would know that's an apple, but no apple that's ever been picked could look like that. You could you could paint an apple that doesn't exist in the sense that no one apple looks like the way the apple that was painted, but it can be an amalgamation of all the traits that apples have, such that anyone who views it can see that it's an apple. In the same way that I could sculpt a urinal and everyone can see it's a urinal. I mean, I don't understand. But what you see that the. the, the why is the subject of a piece of art, why is that so determined? What do you photograph in life? What goes into a photo album? Is it just anything you <laughs> I'm, I'm really, I'm I saying, mean, do you see what I mean? If it, I'm saying, if it you, could. If you, I'm not saying it couldn't, but if you walked into the house of someone who had photos of urinals on the wall, would you think that that person was healthy and sane? You would think, I at thought, the very least, hmm. something about your worldview is off. Oh, okay. Something about you as a person is fundamentally disturbed. And then they communicate to you that they really think that that shape is a beautiful shape. And that's what they're trying to communicate in life. But that's Yeah, but again, that's execution. They're trying to communicate about nothing. They're simply saying, this shape appeals to me. Shapes can appeal to you. So can color on a wall. Why do you color your wall in a specific color? That's not art. It's simply decoration at that point. Mm. You can say, I like the way this color looks, so I painted this room that color. That doesn't make that room a piece of art. But if you're trying to communicate it on a broader level, like for instance, there are there are artists that say, "I'm really wanting to make this piece focus on the color blue and its superiority to other colors." Okay, that's fine. Communicate it to others. That is 100% a underlying. You could, so, you could argue that that would qualify, and then you would probably just argue that it's bad because it doesn't actually establish anything. Just because I painted this thing, but I painted it blue, is like okay, great. What, sure, if you want to qualify that as art, but we can also qualify it as pretty crappy art because it has no I think substance I, to I it. I think I don't like the principle that art I has to have up intrinsic. On, I think the meaning thing is where you're getting Well, no, up. I think, well, let me, let's use the word identity. I think that sure. bothers me that art has to have a, some sort of intrinsic identity. I don't know that that's... That doesn't... I think truth. it's not inherent... Well, but it is. Why, why... How can it not be? Because a thing didn't exist, you made it exist, which means, therefore, you felt that for some reason it needed to exist. Therefore, it's art. Yeah, but I'm saying... What... <laughs> that you just proved your bone... You proved the thing... You, I don't like that it has to have intrinsic meaning, and yet anything you create... Is going to, but it, you just because. But do you see that? You might want to head that's the level. point. Is it's the that's the metaphysical of saying what your worldview will inevitably shape your art. Anything you choose to paint, why did you choose to paint that? It's essentially like arguing you could psychoanalyze anything everyone ever did. Right, and that's the that's point. Is, is you're going every by the simple fact that you did this instead of something else means that for some reason you think this is necessary. That's why a lot of she praises a lot of the art that focuses on. Like in the realm of sculpture, at least she talks about, you know, Greek art as representing man as nearly perfect. That 
you could argue that, you know, art, if you wanted it to be realistic, you'd make it depict man's flaws. You could make it, you know, showing the duality of people and how they can choose to be good or evil. And But she, she says, you know, the reason Greek art stands out is because it implies that we shape man this way. We make man look better than he is. We make him look divine almost. Why do we do that? That's the metaphysical. Under, they had that's a, the metaphysical assumption is that the state of man or the proper state of man is this. It's divinity, and anything other than this. Yes, it's possible that people can be born with disabilities. Yes, it's possible they can have accidents that disfigure them, but those are not the the true sort of proper state of man, and therefore they don't deserve to be focused on. If you depict, that's why. But if but why is it that? Depicting that doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it right or wrong. It just makes it that nonetheless you're communicating something. But if I communicate the same exact same thing, but in us in an opposite, if you yeah you opposing could, principle you, well, exactly. But then that would still qualify as art with a different metaphysical underpinning. But do you, it has to have a metaphysical underpinning. Is the point? But I feel like you can whatever your metaphysical I'm underpinning wants a, to be a ceramic or whatever it is a porcelain sculpture that is a. What would the, what's the metaphysical underpinning? Can you find one? Because if you can't, I'd, th- I'd submit that there doesn't exist. The, the, metas- the metaphysical underpinning is that art can be in no, any form. No, art it, cannot... You can't, def- you can't... The metaphysical underpinning of a subject of art cannot be its execution. That, and I don't... I, I submit I this, therefore it's art. No. That means you, you're definitely communicating an opinion about the world, but the art isn't. You are. By by you're the it's performance art essentially. It sure. only has meaning because you're submitting it. Sure. If it I was don't. just a urinal on a wall, no one would consider it art. It was. It's okay. It so meant purely to up, provoke. So culture completely detached from our modern society. We're dead and buried. They're digging up, you know, through. They would probably find remains of human urine and go, yeah, this is probably where they peed. Well, they could do that, or they could go, this may have been a sculpture. I mean, I doubt. You see, you, but yeah, but may have. That's you have to acknowledge that that's a fringe possibility. It's fringe because if it you see just... eight of them in a row with traces of human remains and fecal matter, you'd go, this is probably where they just did their business. I don't think you'd assume. They really loved this shape so much. It's in every public place. It's everywhere. That would be... You could argue, yeah, maybe that... On a strictly possible level, yeah, that could happen. It. No one would take them serious. No one would take you seriously if you proposed that that would happen. I don't dislike her saying romantic... Well, 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 you know, what did you call it? Romantic... Uh, Romantic. Well, and again, uh, not all art has to be romantic. That's no, the point. I agree. She's arguing for her philosophy through art. But she's not saying it's not art if it is not romantic. I I never have felt that, and I don't think that her sentiment or her desire to com- to how do I get uh, to where I'm going? Encapsulate uh, the the romantic Should've era. Should have started talking about this sooner because now we're going way long. As as an important thing, I just think the. The notion that one individual or a collective of ideas is the there's no metric. arbiter involved. That's what that, I. I'm but not, that no one's no one's arbitrating saying this. Everything she's is going, setting herself up and or no, she's arguing for specific kinds sentiment. of art. She is certainly saying these kinds of art are more valid than others because she agrees she with their who? philosophical underpinnings. She's saying it. Yes. She's saying, I believe this is more valuable than that because I agree with its metaphysical underpinnings. She's and not saying that anything that doesn't isn't art. But that's she's, what you Like, said. for example, no, I'm saying all art has to have a metaphysical underpinning. If it doesn't, it's not art. You can disagree with its metaphysical underpinning because that means you disagree with that view of the world. Uh, but you can disagree like for example, with the fact she, that she your says it shouldn't be art. She and says... A, that, to me, is a meta- metaphysical underpinning of... Okay. No, because what is being represented by that shape? You have to be able to pres- you have to be able to extract that. Doesn't mean that I have to agree with it, but you have to say what is the what is it about this shape that deserves to be praised? If it's just, if just that said- it exists, then again, you're submitting it, and therefore your submission is the art, not the object. 
Because the point is, she like she acknowledges she hates Tolstoy, but she can't deny that he's a good artist in that he has a metaphysical underpinning that he communicates and he communicates it well. She dislikes it not because it is an art, but because she disagrees with it on a philosophical level. That you can absolutely do. You could say, I disagree with your interpretation. I disagree with what you're communicating through this art. But the art has to be presenting something worth communicating. It can't just be, it's a shape. Because then you, the artist, are the one communicating, not the object. Whereas, again, I say what... So, just a basic sculpture, then, say, that's found well, in a park. A sculpture of what? Like say, a person? No. Oh, it has to be... You can't just say Abstract. a basic sculpture. That's modern art, and most of the time it doesn't qualify. At least, and I would agree a lot of the time. If it's and an abstract it thing where you say, okay, it's meant to resemble this, but it's done in this way that makes it ambiguous, again, that where that's you could argue, yes, it's art. Perhaps you could argue that it wasn't executed properly because it makes it unambiguous. Well, but at that point, what makes it art? Like, what's the actual It has to reflect reality. Yeah, that's ultimately the... I mean, that's the definition she provides, and it's a, it's a strict one, but I'm also having... I have trouble myself in how to counteract it. Because I go, if you do acknowledge that, you know, submitting a lump of bananas to a podium and saying it's art, it's like... You haven't done anything with it. Again, exactly. So I go, if you're, gonna, if you're going to exclude that out, where I think that doesn't qualify... Well, because you haven't created Where does the line go? Creation. Okay, fine. You make a sculpture of bananas. That's art. That wasn't any different than the apple. We're back. You see what I'm saying? Again, I'm not saying she's wrong. I'm you just saying, sure, no. I'm not. Then I'm trying to. I could see the argument, but I, then I think you could also then. The problem is, it's not art or not art. There's a whole spectrum of what is it communicating? Is it communicating it well? So you could also argue, yeah, it's art and it sucks because okay. it doesn't communicate anything. If she's worth saying it's a spectrum, then sure. Well, duh. I can get there. It's not, nothing's that. black and white. That's the whole point of this whole well, thing. Well, and I can kind of get there and that maybe it's just the, 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 a painting of, but a painting of true. apples isn't going to be a very interesting painting. Right. It's no matter how well it resembles apples. The, because the, it's metaphysical. The, it may have been executed well where you go, oh, those look like apples. Me- but what's it communicating? You go, really it's not valuable. communicating yeah. apples are so good. Bit, that's in, that's like insipid. It's our, our musical uh, graph in that the more complex and and unique it is, the better the the and the better execution, the better the art is. Yes, Whereas art. Good art is has a clear representation. Has meaning. a rep, yeah, a metaphysical underpinning that can be understood and which is executed in a way that is suitable for its underpinning. Because you can do, and she even folks, acknowledges you can do one or the other. Where you might have a dodgy, you know, worldview that you execute really well, or you might have a good worldview that is executed poorly, and that makes it a you have a confused piece of art at that point that does means it has some merits but perhaps also has some you know the great artists are those who ma- who meld their execution with their subject and make it appropriate for each other it had to be executed this way because not only does the subject communicate what i wanted the way i painted it also communicated it the way i wanted hence artists choosing particular mediums and yeah hence art stories about specific things it's like it, that all has to the best art feels as though it couldn't be separated. It's one Agreed. of the ways she said. Well, you, know, like, you can't yeah. say, if it had been executed differently, it would be lesser. Because of the fact that the execution is so well suited to the underpinning that it, that constitutes its significance. Hmm. Or sometimes, I mean, you could argue that deliberately doing it in a way that is... Uh, that's where I would... Because she like talks against Impressionism, which is a form of art I actually do appreciate. But she doesn't count it as not art. She just thinks it's poor art. And that's where I think I could disagree. Impressionism where? It's uh, when nothing is very clearly, there's no sharp edges or clear definitions. It's sort of, they put, it's it's like as close as you can. caricature, but not No, quite it's as. as close as you can get to just, you know, blobs of paint that are placed in such a way that the shape, that, that a figure can be seen in it. But it's not, it's very hazy because of the fact that nothing is given. It's definite outline I'm trying to th- well Van Gogh would be somewhat impressionist where it's like yes the starry night doesn't actually look like the night sky but it you can clearly tell that's what it is because of the colors and the composition and she mm. and again I would disagree that I'd say because she argues that it's something you know the execution also is part of its meaning because it's like if well you, you may not necessarily if you paint it this way then you're suggesting that you know 
you could argue that the suggestion is that man can't fully comprehend these things and so you only get these glimpses instead of clear images and she would disagree with that but that again that's disagreeing with with not that it's art but simply that you're disagreeing with its execution because again you could disagree either with the metaphysical underpinning or you can disagree with the execution and if you do both of those things it can still be a work of art but if it has none if it does not have a metaphysical underpinning then it can't be because then the whole conversation collapses hmm. It's got so, so unbelievably to, heady. Well, I'm just saying, so back to then. I have to get into the club. I don't want to pay a pure, bunch of money. Pure and simple. It's not art. It's defined as something No, because you can have cathartic. I would say entertainment is, is defined by catharsis. Okay. So you can go to a movie and watch stuff blow up. You can watch, you can go to see Transformers and you can have a fun time. But that doesn't make it art. It's just like, oh, that was kind of cool. It was a bunch of Im- interesting images. Okay, so... Flashy things. That's fine. Action. So then you, what you're saying, and I'm go- getting back, so calling back again to our previous discussion... I am going way too far out of the way. the whole Sandra Bullock movie, uh, I can't remember what it's called, um, you would say you don't like any cinematic expression that's not art you don't like specifically entertainment. I... Hmm. Now I mean, that's obviously a, that's I can't a very say, I can't black say I don't statement. like entertainment because everyone likes entertainment to a degree. It's more of the sense that I think with movies, I admit I'm weirdly picky, more so than I am with probably anything else. And I think it's because if I spend two hours sitting, literally doing nothing, and then get up and don't feel like I've had some kind of change. I feel a little bit like that was wasted time. Okay. So and I how don't does exactly Tropic know why Thunder that's different. Well, I would argue Tropic Thunder has a meaning. Tropic Thunder is a a satire of Hollywood as it as a whole. And that's and, where you'd and argue why is it that Sandra Bullock's is not? Because well, I no offense, I feel like you're the one who's gonna have to I haven't seen it, so you're gonna have to explain to me how it is. It is it is. It's a sen- and that's why No, I'm I would it's- argue it's just because it makes a mockery of itself. Tropic Thunder doesn't make a mockery of itself. It makes a mockery of Hollywood. That's essentially what this is doing. I explain how, because it didn't. that because didn't come it, across it, in it, the trailers. It breaks every... Just because it does tropes and then yeah, goes, Whoa, well, look at us, we inverted trope. the trope. Yeah, exactly. That doesn't make it satire. It It's satire is satirical. No, that- satire actually has to be driving at a point. Satire is we... The, the point... The satire of Tropic Thunder is the excesses of Hollywood, essentially... How so? Because it's, it, you have, you know, it, it basically portrays an ex- a very extreme version of Hollywood sort of characteristics. You have the actor who's way too invested that he has an emotional sort of identity crisis. Okay. Actors who are inserted or celebrities who are inserted for literally no other reason than because they're, in ce- they're celebrities and they don't fit. Actors who are, you know, the drug abuse, and then you've got the producer, you've got the director who's way too snarky and auteur and thinks he's being clever when he's not. You've got the creepy Brad Pitt producer guy, or was it Tom Cruise? I always get them confused. I think it was Tom Cruise. It's like he, so it's like every single person was an exaggeration of these characters of Hollywood archetypes, and it was inflated to such a point of ridiculous that it makes you go, yeah, Hollywood's kind of a ridiculous place, isn't it? That's what satire is, is it basically takes the form of the thing it's, it's not, it's pretending to be that thing, and then deliberately showing itself to be a farce. Well, which is... I don't... I, I think that, again, that's what this does. Like, case in point. Well, what... Brad Pitt's character is supposed to be this, like, oh, Yeah, but he's him the, dying is just a... It's just, oh, look, we broke the trope. Well, it, but it's completely... It's not just him dying. It's completely non-sentimental. Him dying, you know, it's him not, dying well, that's okay. He broke the trope again. It's what but makes that's, that... That's not satire. It is because no. it's it's you have to again, defend you have form. to defend it because you because I I'm again I'm using your exact same definition. It's taking the form of the of the the uh, but that would be thing that it's it's Ooh, I don't want jeering to at and but how it's is it saying, jeering? Well, how is it jeering? Because just to have saying, that happen. Okay, this is an action movie, so therefore here's our quintessential you know action. But it's not an hero action movie. It's a comedy. Else. Exactly. But it's satire. That's I the don't point. believe that. Because it takes on a f- the form of an action movie, and then it's not because it's that's not satire though. That to be to pretend to be said, something that and it then isn't. Reveal no, you have to. to be, no, it has to, but it has to be deliberately goading 
the thing that it's pretending to be so as to ba satire is often done by opposition I mean you could argue That's Tropic Thunder is, diff is a difficult satirical case because it was made in Hollywood I would ha at that point you'd have to analyze I don't know who wrote it why they wrote it and if they were sort of an independent well, you know offshoot of Hollywood who wanted to basically take Hollywood down a peg this was made literally to be nothing but ha ha funny look at us inverting tropes and being silly this kind of stuff doesn't normally happen in movies it's like being self-referential is not satire. Going, oh, what a ridiculous thing. If, it's, if, if you unironically do the ridiculous thing and then comment on how it was ridiculous, that's not satire. How is it unironic? Iron irony is simply saying something you don't mean. If the film buys into its own premise and then says well, how silly we are... Well, that's seriousness concept again of... It's not taking itself to... We're back to that. I don't argument. agree. And that's the point, is I now am officially opposed to that phrase. But... Because I think something that doesn't take itself seriously... Tropic Thunder took itself seriously because it had a message. Its message was, Hollywood's totally stupid. Oh. Simply being a stupid, Holly, stupid Hollywood movie is an... Ex, is Communicates ex, the exact same thing. No. Yes. Because the point... Tropic Thunder was a movie about that. Simply a stupid Hollywood movie isn't about Hollywood being stupid. It's a stupid Hollywood movie. It's an instance that Tropic Thunder would point poke fun at. Mm. You don't just get to say, because I'm self-referential, therefore I'm in, I'm making a it's statement. It's like, no, you're just being what everything is being. You are a stupid Hollywood movie. You're not about stupid Hollywood movies. You are a stupid Hollywood movie. And that's a difficult line with a lot of satire. A lot of satire becomes the thing it's trying to satirize, and that's a sort of tragic it failure. Because once it becomes the thing it's pretending to be, it loses any of its critical power. And I mean critical in the sense of able to criticize. Because satir satire is often critical, deliberately. It's meant to undermine something that, it, that you oppose. Whereas I don't think this movie undermined anything it opposes. I think it was just a wacky, stupid movie for the sake of wacky, stupid movie. I don't know that... You should have talked... We should have started with this. Are you going to let me up here? Are you guarding this, or are you just... Okay. But I don't know that that's a problem when it comes to Well, if you could argue that industry. it's... Well, if you want to say that it was an entertainment movie and not a piece of art, I will well, fully agree with you. And I certainly never discounted or, or argued anything different than that. What I'm saying is you... Again, I'm back to so you, what you're saying is by and large, if to, you'd prefer that like sentiment event. rather than never, by and large, I generally you, don't prefer movies for that. If I wanted entertainment, I tend to go elsewhere, like okay. games usually, or things that I find entertaining, even if they aren't artistic. Although even then, I enjoy a story in a game. I I, get, I tend to get bored quickly of I think action it's fair, only. I, think I it's like TF2. To TF2 is not a piece of art. I will openly admit that. Well. No, I'm going to stick with it. Because while it's excellently done, it's the similar thing. You can watch an MMA fight and go, wow, these guys are at the top of their game. What they're doing is so fascinating to watch because of how, the, how much skill it takes. But I, it, I still don't think you'd call it art. You'd call it a sport Certainly. because it's fascinating. Certainly. And you're celebrating skill, which is a valid thing to do. So TF2, I think, is an excellently made game. I think you could say if you were to incorporate the, the excellent execution of TF2 into a story that, you know, was actually had some meaning in it, then I'd say that would probably end up being a very good game. But I don't know that TF2 is a piece of art. I don't think I need to be up here. I want to get into the club, but I don't want to pay the scalper at the door. And I could have sworn there was some kind of vent somewhere up here that I could climb on. That's and so that's where I go. Game. If we were talking about last time, how I bet you it's our around perspectives are have always been similar in various media and, and things like that but not never exactly aligned and I would say I don't I don't know that everyone finds entertainment somewhere it's not like yes I'm opposed to mindless entertainment oh I like mindless crap but generally movies aren't I don't know why I admit that it's weird that movies are the specific thing that I'm like I'd rather not sit for because then I think the problem with that is it's literally just sitting for two hours doing nothing ultimately hmm. and just like, a game, you could argue, yes, you're, all you're doing is twiddling a controller, but the fact that you, as the participant, are actually part of what makes it happen, 
like the game doesn't happen unless you play it. That makes it more dynamic and invested, even if that's a weak example. So what if, is it part of the social? <laughs> Can I just, I'm not jabbing at you, I'm saying part the of, reason that you don't like these entertainment movies is because for me no, uh, ah, part of the entertainment of it is that you are interacting with those that you're watching it with going this is so stupid yeah but see that to me isn't fun everyone poking fun at something that is acknowledgingly stupid I'm like well then why are we doing this <laughs> if we all agree that it's stupid why would we why would that be fun to all point out that something's stupid hmm. I don't quite get the humor in that like I'm yeah Okay. It's, it's why some people like horror movies that are dumb, because they're like, oh, isn't this cheesy and dumb? I'm like, if we all agree on that fact, then let's put in something else, please. Because I guess... I anyway, I, I will never disagree with you that a good artistic movie, again, great example would be Les Mis, I would argue. I would even agree. But... Even is, if it is doesn't always strike going to have as emotionally. Hi, is, I, is always going to have a higher... Uh, uh, there we go. We made it in. Um, status in my I book. Yes, we're going for two hours. Then, then something that is just purely for the stupidity of entertainment. That much is true. So if we want to keep it on a spectrum and we just want to say that, that's fine. Um, well, I, then I, what was uh, your poison? I'm just saying it's a very di uh, what. The, it's my difficult. Questions I admit probing, it does not, require you to to. You do have to acknowledge that it does eliminate a lot of what you might consider art, and then you have to go, hmm. It's one of those things where it. I fully agree that it's difficult at times. It makes you go, ooh, I don't, I don't know if I want to acknowledge that. But then I also have to. In, it's not to even me. Like it's when you have a. If you're following a philosophical train of thought, and then you come up against it, something that goes, ooh, this conflicts with something that I now. I am now in conflict with something that I currently held. Right. If I can't refute the philosophy, then I have to do that because otherwise I find that that's being disingenuous. Right. To well, say, some because people, if I follow this philosophy, I would have to abandon this and I don't want to, therefore I'm going to stop following the philosophy. So I go, unless you can disprove it, you're just being not, you're not having well, any you're, kind again, of you're not academic or, or intellectual integrity. You're just going, I don't like the consequences of this train of thought, therefore I won't engage. 100%. And that's not a very which good is, reason. Which is such a problem with our current culture because, again, there's no Everyone social responsibility individually. It's like, okay, well, now I just, I don't want to feel that way. Uh, this People reject cognitive dissonance rather than by working through it. Well, they don't even reject it, they it. hide from right, it. Right, that's what I'm saying. Rather than by working through it, they just say, well, I'm not going to deal with that and I'm just going to pretend and like that's not that is how you become percent. uninterrated. Well, it's certainly the way you become integrated into indoctrination. <laughs> well, that's that's the same thing as becoming unintegrated. <laughs> exactly. If you want to argue that. Um, but uh, I think that the, the, the stratifying on a spectrum of art versus entertainment yeah. is, is far more comfortable for me. My questions were certainly probing, but they well, were not meant I to be like disagreeing as much as they were no, to clarifying. I, th I think it, I mean it helps I even to have uh, to learn how you would defend something because that why does that keep happening? Because it helps you understand it better. No one. Did. And I think there's certainly I didn't come a, a mishmash where you could say, okay, is Star Trek a piece of art? And tell me where he yes, at times. At times, it's nothing but mindless entertainment. And I guess that's enough where you could say, I'm not demanding again. Arcane will be the top of everything forever. But there are times when I don't... like I, I, That's the kind of thing you go, I want to pay attention to this because there is so much meaning everywhere that I feel like I want to engage it. Whereas something like Star Trek is like, yeah, I put it on and I'm not really paying super deep attention. But then when something that actually has a, a good piece of like, oh, they're actually communicating something here, then you engage and you say, oh, this was a valid moment. Right. But you, it doesn't mean that's like all of Star Trek is just dripping with second by second artistic meaning. This is the first place people and that's so it can certainly be. It's a rarity. To, it's to rare have, to have it's a no wasted have moments. That. I think Arcane that's is what's, again. That. I was about to say that is what's unique about Arcane is there's no moment that you can miss and not miss anything. Van Bruggen is minor yeah. player. Yeah. Like like I can watch certain shows by literally coming like uh, like uh, cops. A show or like those types that is of shows. A reality show, yeah, right? it is. But I'm just saying that would those arguably... types of shows where you literally come in and out and you can go. I'm literally picking up from wherever this left off and I haven't missed a thing. Like I'm not, I'm not yeah. sore for what I lost out on. 
Whereas if and gen but see that's the thing is where I go generally if I had, those are again why I say those are shows you put on in the background is because I would rather be spending my time with something more meaningful and this is simply an entertainment in the background. Because that's again, and, one and that I, I think comes why. back to why I go well. Because I would rather not waste Man. my life on stuff. No, that no, I, don't I was mean saying something. why put it on. <laughs> well, because like, why are we compelled to do? I'm, I'm saying myself. Well, because included. you can be engaged in meaningful things that are nonetheless perhaps not gripping that you don't find so interesting that you can't tear your eyes away. So having something that's like this is providing the entertainment while this provides the meaning. That can be the way you you do that to maximize your. You know, overdrive <laughs> productivity or whatever you're trying to do. I have no clue. I'm just going to keep insisting. He tells me you don't think very highly of me, do you? Uh. So here's what anyway. Uh, that went well, for that, stupid long. That went for stupid long. We should have started with this because it would have probably this still gone gonna, over an this hour. Is gonna, this is going to air on. Uh, this is going to end on a lighter note. So it, it'll it'll button this nicely. Well, hang you, on. You let me at least the, get to the end of the conversation. Don't don't go ending me in the middle well, of this. I'm, I'm talking like let me save like first. Maybe within the next two minutes. Well, so. that's we got forty seconds. So I, you had mentioned the borrowers, and I said I don't want to. Oh, did you uh, watch it again? Want, no, did you no. destroy your childhood? No, no, no. I said I didn't want. It was a nostalgic movie, which it was not at that point either entertaining or art. It was nostalgia, which is to me different. It's hmm. it's memory. It's history. Well, nostalgia like, okay. couldn't be born it, at in the one time, of those two. Yes, at the time it was entertainment. At six or seven years old, but uh, then I did some poking around as I was just kind of like, oh yeah, I yeah, I was just trying to remember kind of the movie and certain parts about it and things like that. And I came across something that I was thoroughly confused by, but ultimately kind of intrigued by. It. Okay. And that is that there was a BBC version. Maybe of the borrowers was that the original version? It was not. I think because it was a children's book series. It was not. Series, it came wasn't out it? in yes. The books. Okay. So it was just Sidebar. another adaptation yes. of the book. So it wasn't based off of the Correct. movie. Okay. Sidebar. Uh, that I believe. The books are great. I and I genuinely say well it, for children's say, books. No, no, no. no. I'll say it this way: they're great because it's far more like the boxcar children, but they're I small people. I didn't love the boxcar children either. But it's still art. It's a good. Sentiment. I haven't it's just, read enough to be able to. It probably is, but it may not be one I favorite. rank higher. Sure, that's fine. Because again, we can, that can be where you go. Is I go, yeah, sure, it's communicating something that I don't care about. Therefore, I don't care. So about the it. the boxcar children, it it or the borrowers, the actual books, do a better job at saying, oh, there's these kids, and what if they were this small and they had to like navigate life in a manner that was far more complicated because they were small. They were as small as mice. So they live in this, you know, suitcase for a time, and then they move on to this other, you know, shoebox or whatever it is. That to me was more interesting than what happened in the movie, which was literally nothing. They lived in a house. It was really stupid. They were moving. Like there's nothing going on. But uh, as an adult, I can understand that. But uh, I came across the BBC version. I think it was an adaptation of the book. It's possible it was just literally a carryover from the movie. I'm not sure because it did come out after, and Stephen Fry is in it. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. John was, Goodman was in the other movie, and I was like. John mm. Stephen Fry's Britain's God, uh, <laughs> God, God, God <laughs> Judman. Well, you could just go Stephen Fry's Britain's God, but um, I mean, some people in Britain might actually agree with you there. But Stephen Fry, I think, is probably the closest to America's John Goodman. John Goodman's not as beloved as Stephen Fry. People in England really love Stephen Fry. People everywhere tend to love Stephen Fry. Yeah, I don't know that people everywhere love John Goodman as much. But it's, John it's, Goodman has played too many villains to be has he? Yeah. Well, I guess in The Big Lebowski is the only thing I can think of. Well, and The Borrowers. Yeah, but that was so cartoonish that I don't think that counts. No, as, there's That doesn't villains. skew my He's... interpretation. Um, this chick's given me weird vibes. I kind of yes, get... Yes, she is. I kind of get the impression that I should walk away. <laughs> She's just looking at your pockets. Don't worry. She's, I actually she's don't looking, have pockets. I she's don't looking have at your knees and the fact that they have screens on them. <laughs> well, you never know. They might. 